Welcome to the Go Career Talks podcast with Jeremy Fermo. This is a podcast where we're going to talk all things running with running people. So this is going to be stories and everything else. In this first episode, we have myself as the first guest. It's just going to be a solo episode. We're going to talk about the podcast, where I wanted to go, how I got into YouTube, how I got into running, and a lot more. So enjoy this first episode. Let's get it started. All right, guys, welcome to Goku Runner Talks. This is an offshoot of my Goku Runner channel. So I'm going to have a podcast now, and the podcast is called Goku Runner Talks. Just want to introduce y'all for my first podcast, and this is me. I am Jeremy Fermo. I am a runner. I'm a YouTuber here on YouTube, Goku Runner Running Channel. And I love running. I love all things running, love a little bit of lifting. And I wanted to introduce you to myself before we get to any guests because I think it's important for you guys to know who I am, who is the guy asking all the questions before I get to asking questions to other guests. So I'm going to ask myself these own. So I'm going to ask myself my own questions on this podcast. And one of the things about a podcast for sure is you can't edit. Like I'm going to leave that in. Like I wanted to, I was thinking like I should probably take that out and I'll edit it later because I'm a, editor of videos to myself. So a lot of times I like to add jump cuts just so you don't see all of the mistakes that I make whenever I do do a video. So this podcast will be unedited. I'll try to keep everything in there as much as I can. Uh, Hopefully nobody will see anything too crazy, but if they do, maybe it'll be on there as well. So who am I? Jeremy Fermo. I am Jeremy Fermo. I have been running for about 12 years now and i've been enjoying it probably even longer i don't even know when i started i started probably back in 2008 probably just to start trying to lose weight as many people do and i was like let me just start walking because i i hadn't been running i did play basketball back in the day and i lifted weights but i wanted to start losing weight at the time i was probably only 215 which now I wish I could be that weight. <laughs> like if I was 215 now, I would think that I'm an, an Adonis. I would think that I am a statuesque figurine, but uh, I'm right now I'm at 240 pounds, which is not too bad. I've lost about 20 pounds. But to get back to the story, I started walking and I started walking around the neighborhood and I would do that for many, many times. And I remember on one of my walks, I was walking in, I felt this burning sensation in between my thighs. And I was like, what the heck is that? Uh, I thought something was wrong and it, and it hurt every step. And I, and I looked down and my thighs are rubbing. That's the first experience of chafage I ever got. And chafage is horrible. I, I had to do the walk where I was trying not to touch my thighs to each other, like the little waddle that you guys have ever experienced. If you experienced the uh, shavage in between your thighs and then afterwards you know i was sweaty and i took a shower and i was like oh my goodness this is the worst pain ever but but since then you know i've learned about you know the correct shorts the correct uh underwear like you know you gotta wear all that kind of stuff or no underwear i don't know if y'all even wear underwear uh, underneath your running shorts i typically don't like i'll just use a liner but uh, to go back to the story again, running, I didn't start that until much later. I just was, just was a walker. Uh, but eventually, I saw a light pole, and I was like, I wonder if I could run to that light pole. And I did that. And then I would do it again. I would walk. I would run. This was like the beginnings of Couch to 5K. And I did it. I also have a lot of indigestion. So during these podcasts, you'll probably hear me trying to burp or do something. I'm drinking coffee. Probably not the best for it. But uh, I'll try to get through it with regardless. But I would start running, and then that eventually turned to more running. And I remember I signed up for my first race, and after that, I was hooked. I, I Back then, I tell people all the time, like, I've been a runner for so long uh, that, you know, there was no medals for 5Ks. 5Ks, you used to just get a shirt. You used to just get, you know, your banana, your food. And that was it. And you'd only get a medal if you ran a half marathon or marathon. And I was like, you know what? I want a medal. I want a medal because they were so shiny. It's that thing that you, you know, 
once you realize that everybody gets a medal, I know their participation medals, and that's another story for another time. I'm sure people have their thoughts on that too, but I wanted a medal. So I decided to work my way up to running longer and longer distances. Like I would train with Serum Striders, run their lo local runs, start training with other groups. I remember there was an Exogen group back in the day. Uh, we would run with them and then I signed up for my first half marathon. And my brother, Willie, who's also my business partner in Three Bros Running Company, um, that's a running company that I put on where I put on races myself. We were signed up for the Angie's Half Crazy Half Marathon over in like the NASA area, in that in the Clear Lake area. And I did it. I, I remember I ran, I think, you know, the first uh, eight miles were good. <laughs> and then after that, uh, it slowed down. I slowed down and I finished in a time of, I, I think it was 2.11, if I remember correctly. Yeah, about 2.11 and I was spent. Like my feet hurt. I could, couldn't could walk anymore after that. Uh, I had to tell my brother to bring the car up to the curb because the car, which is probably, you know, less than 100 yards away, it seemed like it was another half marathon to me. So uh, I got that and I got my medal and, you know, I've been hooked ever since. So since then, uh, I've been running you know, multiple races. I don't even know how many more half marathons I ran. Ran probably close to 35 marathons. And now I'm doing doing ultras, doing ultras, doing 100 milers. I attempted up to 100 mile distance where I got 80 miles in and I DNF'd that course because it was so muddy on the day of the race. But that's pretty much my running, my running story. I've been enjoying it. Started my own running club and the Golden Triangle Strutters. And we just kept running from there, getting more people to fall in love with the running. Started my YouTube channel over here. Started posting. I got some GoPros from my brother, my older brother, John. He gave me a GoPro for Christmas one year. And I was like, what can I do with a GoPro? Can I film like myself? doing crazy sports because at that time was that it was called the action camera and the only sport that i did was running so i was like let me film my run and at the at the beginning of that i didn't want to show my face i was like i don't want to show my face on social media because i don't want people to know who i am i don't want people to know that i have a youtube channel i'm creating content so it would just be like a, a pov kind of shot in you know, a first person view kind of shot where you're just seeing the road you're seeing my feet maybe, but you're not seeing my face. So I would just do that overlay with music. And I would put like the whole marathon. I remember I ran the Houston marathon and I posted the whole thing, like from mile one to mile 26.2, like the whole race where I just filmed the whole race. It was a four part YouTube series where I just posted uh, that. It was actually pretty popular actually, uh, but watching it back, after a few more videos like that, I thought to myself, this is kind of boring. Like, it's kind of boring not to see, uh, you know, it's like somebody driving. It's just like somebody driving. It wasn't as entertaining to myself. So that's when I was like, let me turn the camera towards myself every once in a while and talk to it while I'm running. And that'll tell a little bit better of a story. And that's how I started getting better at storytelling. Uh, the Ginger Runner was at that time started started to put out videos and i was like whoa there's other people doing this thing that i'm trying to do and i wanted to emulate him uh for sure he was probably my nut my bit my biggest inspiration in creating youtube videos was the ginger runner because uh i was like i love the stories that he's telling i love the storytelling and that's where i started falling in love with creating stories and at the beginning it was just marathon videos, half marathon videos. I didn't think anybody would be interested in a 5K video, but uh, things have changed. Things have changed where now I'm filming everything because YouTube is now all about content. And let's talk about like my, my YouTube journey. Like I already started telling you how I got to YouTube, got the GoPro, got everything else, started editing, and I got into YouTube just to just share. Like it wasn't about making money and nowadays kids uh they want to go into youtube to become a star to become rich and famous but for me initially 
It was just about, and it still is, it's just about the passion of creating a story, about creating content out there that people can watch and enjoy. I do love seeing other people, talking to people, talking to my subscribers, talking to people that uh, call me Goku and all that, but that's secondary to me making good content. And the other day I was eating out at a restaurant by myself because uh, I have another channel, the Beaumont Foodie channel, where I also create content over there, uh, eating different foods, uh, but we'll stick with the Goku Runner. And he asked me, how can he start on YouTube? And I told him, just create content. I said, at the beginning, you may be, it may be the worst video, but the more you do it, the better you'll get. Like, I've been doing this since 2012, I think, I'm going to say, with my first GoPro up there. And since then, I've gotten better and better uh, with editing, telling the story, storytelling, and just doing all that. And, and the most important thing about creating videos, whether it be short content or long for long format content, is to create a story. And that's why I love running videos because it has an inherent story in there already. There's the start to the finish. Everything in between is going to be the meat of the story. So uh, running, running stories have you know a great, great, great story. Uh, and, and everybody out there has a story. I've been starting to film other people as well, starting to film other runners that I don't even know. I like, like I went to Habanero 100 and I uh filmed, I filmed one guy, Manny Olivio, who's done a, a whole bunch of races. Uh, he was the one guy I wanted to film, but then I also filmed two other runners. Like, I asked, I barely knew them. I was like, I'm out there. And I wanted to film the races and I asked them, they, they knew who I was, they knew uh, about go Runner, but I didn't know them too well. And I asked to film them and they were more than happy to do it. And like I said, everybody has a great story and storytelling is the most important part. So if you are trying to start a YouTube channel, that's what I think you should do is focus on the story, focus on storytelling and just produce content. Like the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Like if like running, you know, if you only did, if you only ran, once a week, twice a week, you're not going to get better faster. Like uh, the more you run, the better you're going to get at it. Of course, you need some rest. And, you know, same with YouTube. You can't post every day without getting burnt out. But you need to post consistently in order to get better at it. And don't think that you need to have a million subscribers after the first month of creating content. I've been creating content here on YouTube for 10, 12 years, and I'm just under 10,000 subscribers. Uh, you know, there's points where I will gain 500 subscribers for like a period of two months, uh, you know, 200 subscribers over a month period. But right now I'm stuck right underneath 10,000 subscribers. Uh, and that is due in part to me not creating consistently right now, but it's also just the nature of YouTube. Sometimes you just got to create to create. Don't create to make yourself famous because you're going to disappoint yourself. And another thing I learned from YouTube is don't expect your friends and family to watch every video, to be your biggest fans, because a lot of times they won't be your biggest fans. They are, they are not your target demographic that you're reaching. That They're not your fan base. Um, you know, I tell people many, many times, my girlfriend doesn't watch my videos. They don't, she, she watches a, some of the videos, but she doesn't watch all the videos. My brother doesn't let watch the videos. Back in the day when I posted a video, I was like, you didn't like my video. You didn't comment on my video, but who cares if they don't comment, they don't like, then find somebody and make content for somebody who does like, like I have subscribers that have been with me, uh, with my journey for, you know, eight years, five years, six years three years. And they're, they're the people that I want to reach. Those are the people that I want, want to reach. I don't want to reach, you know, the guy that I can't reach. It, it's, it's just an impossible scenario for you to be able to do that. So uh, that's my journey here on YouTube. And I'm still creating content, creating more, trying to, you know, level up and do other things. Like I started Goku Runner Talks Tuesday, which is actually probably the reason why I want to get into podcasting because the Goku Runner Talks Tuesday is a live stream where I pretty much talk to the camera. And just like, like I said, you're going to suck at the beginning. Whenever I did my first live stream, it was horrible. It was very cringeworthy to watch because 
Uh, I would go out there expecting people to be on the chat, and there was nobody on the chat. And I was like, what's going on? Uh, and it would just get awkward. There'd be awkward silences. Uh, but now, you know, doing the Go Corner Talks live stream for uh, probably just just about a year, maybe 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 more. I've gotten better at talking to the camera, being comfortable, not having somebody respond to you, not having interactions, and that's what you gotta do. And that's what led me to do the podcast, which I'm excited for the podcast. I want to talk to a lot of different different runners. Uh, from the fast people to the slow people to the mid packers to the back of the packers. Like I said, everybody has a running story. Everybody's interesting. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, and this goes with YouTube too. They're like, I'm not interesting enough to have a YouTube channel. I'm not interesting enough to have a YouTube channel, but tell a story. I tell a story. It doesn't matter what you think. People, people will latch on to you and they will follow you. And that's how you build your YouTube channel. And and talking about the podcast, that's where I want to go. I want to start talking to people. My first guest is going to my first three guests are going to be from the Houston Marathon. And that's that's also another reason why I started the podcast because I'm a Houston Marathon ambassador because I love the Houston Marathon. That was my first marathon where I finished uh, at um, what was my time there? I think my time there was five. No, it was 4:59. I just I just broke five hours for that race. Uh, I love that race. There was George Bush on the course, a senior, uh, the president. There were a ton of people running, you know, in and and that's where I got like my first marathon medal. So uh, that's the one I love. So I'm a Houston Marathon ambassador, and with that, you know, I'm promoting them as well, which is kind of a conflict with what I do with Three Bros Running Company, which is my own running company. But I love the Houston Marathon so much that I don't mind promoting another race, especially if they're not conflicting with any of our races, too. So I don't think there's a problem with that. But uh, I'm Houston Marathon ambassador, and they asked me to create some content with the balloon people. Because last year, when I was running the Houston Marathon, I was just trying to have time on my feet because I was training for the Rocky Raccoon 100, and that's where... Uh, I signed up for the Houston Marathon, and my whole plan was to just get as much time on my feet because I'll be at Rocky Raccoon for just about 32 hours, and I needed to train to go at an easy pace. So my whole goal was to go a 13, like 13 minute to 13:20 pace the whole time, and that would get me to the finish line. Um, and I ran with a friend, and he ended up dropping off around mile like. 13, 14, and I finished, and at that time, there was balloon people chasing us. Like, that's the first time I saw the balloon people. They were right behind us, and they're like, if the the first balloon person passes you, you're okay. The second balloon person passes you, you're okay. But if the police car passes you, you have to go to the side of the road, and you're pretty much not going to get an official time. So uh, that's the first experience I saw about the balloon people. They were pretty much like jaws creeping up on you every single time they got close to you. So I would see them many times and I uh, did a Instagram video, Instagram short on them uh, where you could hear the bloom people telling you, you got 10 more minutes. Don't worry. We're running ahead. Uh, you'll be fine. And that's a hard job for them. I, I feel because people, you know, they love pacers, but they probably don't want to see the balloon people behind them during a marathon because that means you're pretty much going to DNF if you don't push yourself and you're so tired. So uh, the Houston Marathon wanted me to interview them somehow. And I was like, how can I interview them on my channel? I could just do a regular video, but I think the best way would be for me to create a podcast, which I've been already talking about doing. So I was like, let's go ahead and start this podcast. So the first, uh, the first guest I'm going to have is, I forget his name, I think Ken, uh, but he's done like 15 15 Iron Man. He's done, you know, a lot of great things. So I'm gonna have to find some questions to ask him uh, for the for the podcast because this will be my first podcast, you know. And I'm be honest with you, it might suck. It might suck, but it might suck for the first like 10, 15 podcasts. But I will get better. So stay with me for the Goku Runner talks, and hopefully we will grow 
this podcast to become better and better and better as I get better creating because you know the first the first thing that you create is never going to be the best thing that you create so you always want to keep getting better incrementally as you create your podcast or create anything really so uh with that this is going to be a shorter podcast just about 20 minutes that's me that's who i am jeremy fermo the goku runner three bros running company i'm a race director Go check out that channel too. And uh, here's to uh, many, many more podcasts. This is the this is the first of many. Hope you guys got a good, good uh, inkling of who I am and what I want to do here. And yeah, join me for the next one where I talk to the balloon people. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment on whatever platform you're listening to or watching here on YouTube. Do that, and here's too many more podcasts in the future. See you guys on the next one. Peace.